Hi, this is Bart Paulson, and I am going to demonstrate how to make a box plot, uh, primarily to identify outlying scores in the program StatCrunch. The first thing you need to do is get to the website statcrunch.com and sign in. And then I'm going to use a data set that I've used in previous examples that already exists on StatCrunch. And because it's a StatCrunch one, I'm going to come up here to explore. Um, by the way, you can get to it by either pressing Explore and then clicking Data, but you can also go to this drop-down menu right here and explore data that way also. And this gives me a uh, window where I can browse. I'm going to type in, um, I'm going to use the uh, data set surveyf08.xls. Because I've used it already, it pops up the first time, the first word, but I press Search and it brings up this data set with the barber. Um, in the last one, I made a histogram of the hours studying per week. That's this variable right here. I'm going to do that again, except this time I'm going to use a box plot to identify potential outliers. That's important because in the uh, uh, histogram that I made, it looks like there might be some outliers on the high end here, people who spend uh, 20 hours or more uh, studying per week. Okay, the way I do this is I go to graphics, down to box plot. From there, it brings up a dialog box, and I can click on my variable. I'm going to use study. I can use this if I want to restrict it to, for instance, non outlying scores or by some other variable. This one I can break it down by men and women or uh, whatever. I'm not going to do either one of those. I'm just going to go to Next. Now, this is one which, strangely enough, should be mandatory. This should be the default, and that is use fences to identify outliers. I mean, that's the whole reason that I use box plots. So make absolutely sure you check that one. Now, by default, box plots go up and down. Um, however, I like to do them side to side because then it puts the score scale, the hours of studying, in the same direction that it is on a histogram. Makes it easier to compare the two. So I'm going to do it horizontally, but you don't need to. Then I press Next, and I get to Titles. And this is something that needs to always be done. The title on the top, I'm going to put um, Hours of Studying, studying Per Week for Students in Stat Crunch survey. I'm also going to put an X label because otherwise it would just put study on the uh, bottom of the chart and then you need to put hours of studying per week. And I think that's it. If I wanted more than one box plot, and sometimes I do, I could, could use this to put them. Um, but I'm just going to press create graph now. And there is my box plot. The blue box here is represents the middle 50% of the score. So the middle 50% of scores go from about 3 hours of studying per week up to about 9 hours per week. The line in the middle is the 50th percentile, or the median, or the second quartile. Those all mean the same thing. And it says half of the people in the survey do about 6 hours of studying per week or less. The other half do uh, more than that. These lines right here are sometimes called whiskers. Sometimes, so it can be called a box and whiskers plot. This one represents the lowest. It looks like we have somebody, at least one person, who spends no time studying per week. And then this one up here, these are the high scores, but they are identified as outliers. And the whisker here goes to the highest non-outlying score, which is about 16 or 17 hours per week. These two at 20 and 21 or 22 hours are outliers. And the way it determines outliers is it goes to this box, the blue box, from the bottom to the top of it is called the interquartile range because it goes from the first quartile on the low end to the third quartile up here on the high end. And the difference between those two, which in this case is about 11 or 12 hours, you multiply that times one and a half. If it's 12 hours, that gets you to 18, and you add that onto the top end and that gets you to where the cutoff is. And anything beyond there would be an outlier. Now, the nice thing about that is there may be situations in which you want to ignore outliers, and there are ways to restrict them so they're not included in analyses if you're so inclined. 
You can also <clears throat> do what's called a transformation of the data, where you take, for instance, the logarithm, and that will bring them in. We can deal with that another time. But for right now, this is the box plot. It identifies two outliers, and it can be helpful for us to uh, keep those in mind in future analyses, because things like means and standard deviations and correlation and regression can get distorted by the presence of outliers. So the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to export this to save it. And I type in box plot of hours studying per week. And I'll just hit export. And now it's saved.